I love you. Do you really? Uh, yeah, I do. Look, honey, I've got someone here, so I'll talk to you later, all right? Yeah, bye. May I help you? Yes. I'm here at the request of the King family. I wonder if I might have a few moments alone with the deceased. A king? King? Yeah. Milton King? Yes. Yeah. Should just be a second. I'll call. Would Daryl or Larry please come to the first call desk? Should only be a minute. Thank you. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Are you in a hurry? Yes, I am. Well, in that case, uh, I'll take you in. Thank you. A little chilly. Yes. Oh, he's in D21, Father. Uh, I don't usually come in here. I have a weak stomach, I guess. So why don't I leave you alone, and when you're done, I'll be right outside. Fine. Thank you. I just want to ask some questions. It's me. You remember me? The coroner's office, and then at the hospital? No. But come on. I just want to ask a few questions, that's all. Look, oh, me, I don't even know you. Yeah, sure you do. Remember, you came in dressed as a priest. No. Come on, look. I'll, I'll take you to the coffee shop. I just want to ask you something. All right, remember, you came into the coffee shop. My name is David. What's yours? Paul. The first victim, King. He was Jewish. I didn't even think about it when you came in dressed as a priest. And then the next night, seeing you in the hospital, and then a few minutes later, the nurse that was attacked in the lab. I knew it wasn't a coincidence. She was murdered tonight. These crackers are stale. Are you looking for someone? Who? I don't know. A girl? A woman who disguises herself as a prostitute? Why would someone do that? Why would someone disguise himself as a priest? You know, don't you? About you? About her. You don't know anything about me. But you know about her, don't you? Say it. Coffee, huh? Thanks. <laughs> Say it or get out of here and stop wasting my time. Okay. Is she, like, a vampire? Like a vampire? My friend, there is nothing in this world like a vampire. But you know that, don't you? No. It's not true. Nobody believes in vampires. Not, not real ones. That's their greatest strength. Fact that no one believes. But you do. And you'll never be free again, you know. Free? Free of that knowledge. Innocent. You've lost your innocence. You're so much like me when I first found out. Such a revulsion. And yet, such a sense of discovery. The Christopher Columbus of the world of the living dead. Don't be afraid of me. We're brothers. We share a knowledge few people have and fewer understand. Listen, it's been six months since I could 
really talk to anyone. And now the same thing is happening to you already. And you can't talk to anybody about it because if you do, they'll lock you up and shoot you up with Thorazine. And finally, in the end, you'll be excommunicated. Excommunicated? You really are a priest? This is not important. I was a priest in a small church outside New Orleans, St. Charles Parish. And when I found out about her, when I knew I had to destroy her, I... Oh, no, wait. Destroy her? Kill her. Once you discover a vampire, you have to destroy it. My God, what else is there to do? A vampire has glimpsed hell. She knows what awaits her. And so she'll go on killing. She must. And each new victim will become a vampire. So what choice do you have? No choice, my friend. Listen to this. This is how clever she is, how insidious. Right after she took the first man here, the lawyer, she found out that I had followed her, so she went to the hospital. She went there to steal blood so she could lay low for a while. No new victims, you see. And that would make me think that she had left the city and I would leave looking for her somewhere else. But I'm too smart for her. And she knows it. She knows I'm here. And I know that she is out there right now. What's wrong? You said that once she'd taken her first man here, you said here. Do you mean L.A.? That's where we are, isn't it? No, no wait, please listen to me. Where was she before this? I mean, in the last month or so. Tucson, most recently. And before that, Fort Worth. Why? Did she kill in those places? <laughs> I think I can help. Help? Help me? You're an amateur. I don't even know what you're doing here. What are you doing? Looking for Desire? Desire? That's her name. Didn't you know that? Do you know how old she is? How long she survived? How many victims she's claimed? Nothing. You know nothing. And you're going to deal with her. You're going to destroy her. Tell me, David. Are you a righteous man? You offer me help. You're a child. A vampire has no power over a righteous man. You know that, don't you? How could you know that? Temporal men should not hunt vampires. Do you know why? Because she'll find a crack in your armor. A hairline split. And that's all she needs to seduce you. To penetrate your soul. And once she does, you're hers forever, my friend for eternity. These donuts are stale, too. Hey, let me help you, Paul. I can. Whether you think so or not, you're right that people don't believe in vampires, but if you talk to them, I know we can convince... Who? Van Ness. His name's Jerry Van Ness. Who is he? He's a cop. He's a detective. Are you crazy? Oh, all right. Are you crazy? The hey, police. You have to go somewhere else. Okay, it's okay. Oh, my God. No way. I need you, Paul. I found you, and I'm not going to let you go. All I want you to do is talk to him. That's all. All right. You will. All right. I'm going to make a phone call. You wait right here. Metropolitan Police, please. Thank you. Jerry Van Ness, please. 